Hey everybody, I hope you're doing okay today. I'm having a great day. I'm home. Ah, there goes the cuckoo clock. It must be time to start. Oh, and there's Rosie. Hey Rosie. Rosie's giving us a little bit of love too. My shirt today says, Rescued. My, is my favorite breed. So, yeah, absolutely. So you guys, I hope you're all having a really good day today. And getting the comments going here. Howdy do. I've got some fun things to talk to you about today. Um, one of those has to do with this, this, these guys. These, those are uh, ravens. I'm going to talk a little bit about ravens. And so that's one thing I'm going to share with you today. And I don't know if my good friend Helen Godden's watching. Probably not. But that's her quilt way back on the back wall. So we're not going to show that one today. But I, I don't want you to miss out on knowing that it's back there. It's a man from Snowy River. So, yep. Hi, Sue. It's good to see you. Wanda, oh my gosh, it's good to see you. Happy birthday if this is your day. Wanda, happy birthday to you. And for those of you that are on the East Coast, if you're having to deal with Hurricane Henri, I hope it's not Henri. I hope it's just a reasonable rainstorm and not going to cause any serious damage. Jacqueline from Norfolk, how are you? How are you? I don't know if I saw you when I was in Norfolk, but I, was, I enjoyed my visit when I was there many years ago. And Dublin, Maura from Dublin. Are you meaning Dublin as in Ireland or Dublin as in Dublin, California? I'm going to bet that you mean Ireland, and I can't wait to get back to Dublin. I was supposed to be there in September, but that's not happening. Uh, but I am planning to be back next year. You guys, I want to interact with you today. So if you've got some questions, uh, I mean, I'm going to be sharing with you several things, but if you've got some questions that you would like to pop in the comments, this is just chat time, live from the mountain. Ricky Tim's just sharing a little bit uh, of life with you guys. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about um, my Raven collection. My house on the mountain is it's at a ranch that I named Autumn Rock after the big rock crop outcropping. Many of you have followed me and you know this major outcropping that I named Autumn Rock. And uh, the rock itself was not named pr previously, but I ended up uh, when I was trying to buy the land, I sold a quilt called Songe de Temps, which is basically Autumn Dream in French. And it was the name of a piece of music that was being played on the Titanic as it was sinking. And I have a love affair with Titanic. That's a whole nother thing. But I ended up selling that quilt to get part of money for the down payment on the land. And so I named the rock Autumn Rock after that. But... Um, but I have a situation with, I'm sorry, I'm getting a message that it's interrupted and I'm going to see if I can't get to a better signal for you guys. Um, the, uh, the, the house, when the house got built, cause I'm, I'm a guy that names things. Um, the house is called the rookery and the rookery is a gathering place for ravens. So all right, I'm gonna be in here in this room. I'm hoping that that will help the internet connection just a little bit and uh, and talk to you guys. So uh, so here I am, and I hope that this will help a little bit better. Um, but, but since I am the rookery and I'm a raven fanatic, I thought I would share with you um, my ravens. And now I'm having to walk because I remember I wanted to get a book, and I see it right here. Ugh. That's excellent. I don't know why it's all tangled up. There we go. You'd think I'd have my act together. You guys, yesterday I was in Nebraska. Today I'm in Colorado, and that was not flying. It was driving. So I've had a, I've had a really, really fun two days. I got to do a lecture um, in Garing, Nebraska, near Scotts Bluff Monument in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. And it was for the International Quilt Study Center. It was really wonderful. 
opportunity. I had a great time yesterday and got back late last night. So we are going to talk about, now that you guys have arrived, we're going to talk a little bit about my ravens. Uh, a gathering place for ravens is called the rookery. So I have a lot of ravens in my house, and I'm not going to give you the long story of why I have a strange connection to ravens, but um, I am going to share you some share with you some fun things about ravens today. So the first thing I want to just share with you is some pictures. I have little things like this. Is uh, These are not stacked rocks. They are actually a ceramic um, art piece done by one of our local artists in, uh, in the area, and I really adore, uh, adore these pieces. I've got two of them. And this is some little wooden carved ravens, and uh, they're on a little shelf in my in my dining room and I, I keep corn down there because of course they're trying to eat so they they need to do that so there's that one I thought you might like seeing that and then I've got all right this is kind of interesting this is not a raven uh, this was a gift from my good friend Judith Baker Montano in La Vida Colorado Judith is a an art quilter she does uh, crazy quilting and wonderful uh, embroidery she does embroidered um, landscapes and underwater scenes as well and judith gave this as a gift for having used my building uh, for the reception of her daughter's wedding and it's a caribou skin but the surprise is on the back of this caribou skin is a painting so this is the back and i'm just folded it over so you can see it's the back but really and truly there's the whole thing on the back, and you can see how amazing that is. It's good to see you guys. I do see your names as you're popping in and saying hello, so uh, it's great to see you guys. And I love knowing that you're having fun on your projects, but look at this ink. This is ink. This whole back of this uh, caribou skin is inked, and I think that's pretty exciting. And then... We go into my house and we see uh, under my front door or above my front door, I have these three raven stained glasses that I designed. They were a gift. Uh, they're a very special treasure to me, but I did design them uh, for the house. And I'll let you know that there's a, uh, the one in the middle has the little red berry. You can see him. He's all proud. He's got his red berry. And the one on the left side is looking over his shoulder like he's all pissed off and he's mad. He's got the berry and I am i don't get to have one. And the raven on the right is all perched and kind of anxious to go in. If you drop it, it's going to be mine. You better keep your eye on it because I'll get it if you don't, uh, if you lose it. So that's my stained glass windows that are above. And... Then I have, surprise, 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 I've got raven quilts in my house, and I thought you might like to see these. So get ready for this. This is a little miniature. This is done by Dana Lynch. Dana is a, a was a dear friend of mine, a wonderful student, and those of you that know, knew Dana know just that she was a gem. She was special, and Dana passed away in 2019 uh, from a battle that she had had with cancer, and I was so honored that she gifted me this quilt so many years ago, and I keep it in one of the, the bedrooms in the house for the guests to enjoy. And so this is my little my little raven quilt from Dana Lynch. It's uh, appliqued, it's got some, you can see the stitches on it and you can see the, the quilting. This is probably, I'm gonna say it's about 10 inches wide by maybe 12 to 13 inches tall. So it's, uh, it's small. It's about the size of a regular piece of paper, but I like it. It fits really well. And it's easy to put small things up. You know, sometimes the bigger the quilt, the harder it is to keep them out uh, on display because our wall space goes away. And now I want to show you this one. This is over my dining room table in my dining room. These are two quilts. Yes, they are quilts. They are framed. They're behind glass. Um, they are made by Judy Allborn, and Judy is, uh, she, she does wonderful portraits like this. Now, Judy was featured, uh, as a guest on thequiltshow.com, so those of you that, um, that are members of The Quilt Show, and if you're not a member of The Quilt Show, we would encourage you to join, 
Those of you that are members of the Quilt Show, you can go search for Judy Alborn, A-L-B-O-R-N, Alborn, Judy Alborn, and watch her show. But I commissioned her, and the thing I want to tell you about this is that when I commissioned it, I asked for one of the ravens to be holding a key and the other raven to be holding a lock. So they needed to work together. The ravens each had something the other one needed. If the lock was locked, the other one had the key, or if somebody needed to lock something, the key needed a lock. So they worked together. But whenever Judy brought these out to the house and unveiled them, there was the key and there was a watch and a pocket watch. And I and you have to look at this really carefully because I said, Judy, did I talk to you about my new tattoo? And she said, no, what do you mean new tattoo? I said, well, I've been wanting to get a new tattoo and I've already drawn it and designed it. And I didn't talk to you about it. And she said, no. She says, but I hope you're not upset. I, I chose the watch because the the lock, I had a little padlock. It looked like it was holding a purse and it just didn't make any sense. So I chose the watch and I says, I can't believe you chose the watch and you didn't talk to me about my tattoo. Oh, thank you so much for doing the quilt show. Thank you for adding the, the links. You guys, if, if you're looking at the links, you're seeing the Judy Allborn show, A-H-L-B-O-R-N. Uh, there we go, A-H-L-B-O-R-N. I knew it was Allborn. Anyway, the crazy thing is, she said, no. I said, what? She said, what's your tattoo? I said, my tattoo is a raven holding a pocket watch and it's almost midnight because time is running out and her watch is almost midnight and I was just gobsmacked uh, to hear that story. And now because you guys know that time is my life word, uh, the key to life is time. So that is the pair of ravens that I have hanging over my dining room. And yes, these are quilts and the, the beautiful stitching that's on this. It's just lovely. So I love it, love it, love it. And if you want to know more about Judy Auburn, follow the links and go watch that show. We would love for to, to have you. So this is a quilt that, it, it was a quilt that won first prize in Houston in the art miniature category. It's by Kat Luria. Kat is from Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, after the show, I reached out to her to see if she was willing to sell this quilt, and she was, and it, uh, it hangs on the wall. But I want you to look at the fabrics in this. I do think that fabrics make all the difference in the world, and if you look at these little bits of fabric, you see fabrics that have blue in them and purple in them and green in them and teal and even some red and even some orange if you look really close. And the thing about it is, I mean, when you look at anything that's black, it can be very iridescent. And isn't this so exciting because of those unique uh, fabrics that are there? And of course, the quilting that's in the background is just stunning. So I love this little quilt, and I am very, very proud to own this. The next one that I'm going to show you, hang on to your horses for this one. This is a quilt from the Ukraine. From Ukraine, her name is Natasha Lashko. And Natalia is, uh, she is amazing. This is all handmade. And this is not made with snippets of fabric. It's made with turned edges that are the size of spaghetti. This raven is absolutely stunning. I'm gonna give you a chance to look at it for a second before I slip over to the detail and zoom in, but it is just beautiful. Her hand quilting, the needle turn Celtic designs, and all of these, again, these wonderful colors. We think, you know, we see a black bird, so we must just use black, but again, there's blues, there's teals, there's purples. There are blacks and there's grays, but then again, even in the wings, you'll see these little bits of red popping through. Not just in the mouth, you'll find those extra colors popping in there. So I think this is a stunning quilt. Um, I am really excited and this one hangs in my studio. I get to look at this every day. And here, get ready, this is the detail so that you can see that these are actually woven in uh, and stitched down, but they are not raw edge. It is turned edges to create these little spaghetti shapes 
that are in this. Isn't that amazing? Just absolutely amazing. And then you get little teensy tiny French knots to make the the specks in the eye. Just amazing. Just amazing. It is amazing. Yes, I see your comments. It is truly amazing. So that's my Raven collection, you guys. Uh, not the whole thing. It's just a snippet of it. But how about story time? I've got a book. People uh, often ask about the Raven, and I'm not going to give you the full story. But the Raven, while it is often an omen of bad tidings and death and, and stuff like that, because it's always and often seen around carrion, the raven in the Pacific Northwest and up into Alaska is associated with the creation story. And so I am a creative person, so I connect to the raven as being a creator. And today I'm going to read you this book by Gerald McDormand, and it's called The Raven, A Trickster Tale from the Pacific Northwest. And I have to tell you, I knew this story before I found the book, and even after I knew the story, I was watching an old rerun of Northern Exposure. Some of you will remember that uh, that show. And Marilyn, the uh, the doctor's secretary, she stopped somebody on the street and she told this story. So I've known this story for quite a while and then I found the book on a trip and I bought it. So I'm just going to read it to you because it's really easy. You guys hang on to this. It's actually very, very, very cool. Okay, The Raven. All right. All the world was in darkness. The sky above was in darkness. The waters below were in darkness. Men and women lived in a dark and cold world. And so the raven, there he is. The raven flew across valleys, across mountains. He flew along rivers and over lakes. There was darkness all around. Then he saw a bit of light far away, and he flew and flew and came closer to the light. The light was at the edge of the water. The light came from a house of the sky chief. It was shining. Raven perched high in a pine tree on the shore. Raven watched. There you go. You feel like a kid right now, but you're going to love this story, so hang on. The raven saw a beautiful young girl emerge from the shining house and go to the edge of the water. All right. She was the sky chief's daughter. She knelt and drank some water from a woven basket. All right. You wonder what's going to happen. The raven changed himself into a pine needle, and he then fell down from the tree and floated on the water. When the girl drank again, she swallowed the pine needle. Ta da 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 da. After a time, the girl gave birth to a child. The child was small and dark with shiny black hair and tiny black eyes. Who do you think the child was? Yeah, you're getting it. It was Raven. Raven had been reborn as a boy child. The Sky Chief was delighted with his daughter's child. He called him Grandchild. He played with the boy and craved for his toys. He invited the elders to come and see the curious, wonderful child. The elders gathered in the shining house with the sky chief and his daughters, and they watched the raven child crawl around on the floor of the lodge. He pretended to be playing, but all the time he was trying to find where the light was hidden. Hmm, I wonder where the light's hidden. Okay. The box was large. It was carved and painted with many colors. The box was bright and it glowed and the raven said, Gaga. What do you want? asked the mother. Raven child said, Gaga. He began to cry. What does this child want? asked the elders. The raven child said, Gaga. He cried and cried. My grandchild wants the box, said the, ch said the sky chief. Don't you think I'm crazy because this is a great story. The young woman placed the box in front of the raven child. All right. She took the lid off the box. Inside was a smaller box. She took the lid off of that box and inside was even a smaller box. 
The mother took the lid off the box and light poured out of it. The light flooded the room. Inside the box was a shining ball blazing with light. What do you think the ball was? It was the sun. Give him the ball, said the sky chief. His mother gave Ravenchild the ball. Ravenchild stopped crying. He began to play with it, rolled it on the floor. Gaga. Then he changed into a bird and said, ha ha. All right, he became the raven once again. He's got the sun in his talons. The sky chief, his daughter, and the elders looked on in amazement. The raven plucked up the ball of light in his beak and flew through the smoke hole of the lodge and disappeared into the sky. Raven flew over valleys and mountains, flew along the rivers and lakes. He threw the sun high into the sky, and there it has stayed. This is how Raven stole the sun and gave it to all the people. So the raven is associated in the lore with the creation story and the creation of sun. So I have a very, very uh, big affinity for the raven because of his attachment to creation and because I love to be creative. And I know that many of you do too, all right? I know that was a little silly, but I just, I really do have a wonderful affinity for ravens and Sometimes they're outside and they're making noise and I think they're laughing at me or talking to me or telling me stories and I could go on and on for this for days. But I also want to now share with you a little bit of some blocks that I discovered. Um, I The blocks are antique blocks and I took pictures because I wanted you to see them really good and I know the camera can sometimes not be quite as good. These blocks are from the 18, maybe 70s, um, 1880s, they are really old blocks. They are, they are in good condition, but they are also brittle and fragile because of their age. But these are Lemoyne stars. They have uh, a diamond frame around that, so they're set on point, and then they're put on uh, with Carolina lilies on the four corners. So... I want to show you three of these blocks and then I'm going to show you a quilt that I'm, I've designed that I hope that we can work on together. I'm hoping that this can be a 2022 project for you guys. So I love these. I wanted you to, to notice this. When you look at these blocks, uh, let's take a moment to just look at the patchwork. This one is pretty standard. If you look at the pieces that are in the star, they are solid diamonds. I mean, when I say solid, they're not patchworked together. Although the setting blocks, the triangles and squares that are kind of creamy stripe, those are on angles. They're not all on the straight of grain or cross grain, so you can see that happening. And then you can see a little bit of staining that are on these blocks. But let's look at the next one. Now, Look at the Lemoyne star in the center and look at one of those diamonds and you'll see that the diamond has been pieced. And look in the background of these blocks. In those same areas, you see several seams because the quilt maker is really making do, seaming the fabrics together to make a bigger piece of fabric to put that together. If you look in the very bottom left corner, you see that that square has also been pieced together. These are the things that make me overly excited about the quilt. They provide quirkiness, they provide interest, and I think that one of the things I'm going to start doing in the future, even if I didn't have to piece the stuff together and make do, I love this quirkiness. If you've ever looked at an old antique make quilt, when maybe with some friends and you're studying it, you love pointing, oh, I wonder what they were thinking when they did that. I wonder why that decision was made. And we can look at these quilts and we get to study them and maybe try to get into the minds of the makers. And it's always fun. So why not give your future generations some questions and go, what was she thinking? Is she crazy? 
I wonder why she needed to do that. Surely she had enough fabric. She didn't need to piece things together. That was 2021. Surely she wouldn't have had to do that back then. So give them something uh, in your world that might give something fun to think about. So I'm going to show you one more block. And that's this guy. Get ready, you guys, because I'm fixing to show you the reveal. Look at the different fabrics. So a lot of different fabrics in this Lemoyne star. But the values, the darks and the lights, are still uh, radiating around. Um, even in those diamonds, you see uh, the bottom right diamond, you see uh, purple and tan on that inside star. And then you see different fabrics being used from uh, different fabrics and pieced together in those backgrounds. And then whenever you look at the background fabrics of the outer part in the Carolina Lily part, you see different fabrics patched together, but the values are what's making this work. They didn't suddenly put in a, a stripe of dark. It's, it's still light. It's in the same values, and values is what makes it work together. So, all right, you guys. So what I want to do now is I want to share with you a quilt that I've designed from these blocks. I, I expect that when I make this quilt, I may be using my Lizzie Albright fabric, which is kind of a vintage style look of the uh, of the of the uh, of the time period, um, and also um, just really trying to have a fun time to put some fabrics together for you. So here I go. Get ready. Are you holding? Well, maybe maybe I won't show you just yet. Do you have any questions before I show you? Hmm. Carol loves antique quilts. Milo is from the UK. Lynn, I love to rescue old quilts and quilt tops from antique stores and flea markets. All right, you're excited. Here you go. All right, I won't keep you any longer. Here we go. This is the quilt that I've designed using those blocks. So I'm excited about this quilt. I know that I will probably still make a few more changes on this quilt um, as I move forward to do a pattern and to get this ready to be actually made by you guys uh, stay tuned, stay posted with me. If you're not on my newsletter, definitely sign up for my newsletter at rickytims.com. So any comments? What do you think about this quilt? I'm always open to suggestions. You know, just because I've designed it doesn't mean that it cannot uh, still have a change here or there. I'm just looking to see if there's any questions that I've missed. Isn't that great? It is big. It's a full-size quilt. I think it's about 86 inches. Hey, Cheryl, it's good to see you. Thank you. I think it's pretty exciting. One of the things that I like about this, if you look at the sashing, instead of just putting a regular sashing in, I put kind of a, an applique chain with little circles for the sashing. The, for the feathers that you see in the border are applique. There's also applique uh, kind of flowers near the center with the yellow sashing uh, with the little, the little uh, ovals, I guess, with the little pink circles. Those are also applique. You know, Candy, uh, Candy's asking how will you be able to learn about this quilt. I can't urge you enough to go to rickytims.com. It's on the bottom left of your screen and sign up on the newsletter link. Um, then, you're, then you know everything. I send out about once a week. There are some weeks because I have a special something that's going on where I might send out a second newsletter. But primarily it's once a week and I do a Today on the Mountain a video. Um, I also try to do a quilt of the week. I show off the photos from my photography class. And I just have little fun stuff. It's not a long newsletter. It's, I try to keep it short and sweet. But anytime I've got a new project or a new class, um, it will be uh, available to you there. Um, different sizes of the same block. Yep. And then, Joe, will you include the antique blocks when you make it? Joe, I don't think I'm going to make this quilt with the antique blocks. And the reason is because... I can tell how fragile the fabric is already 
And if I'm going to make this into a quilt that I want to see and use and hang or show, I really don't feel like I can use these fabrics. Uh, I think they're starting to shatter. They're, they're not in the world's best. They are, they're in good condition, but I think if they were in a quilt and trying to be stitched together, I think it's just too brittle and too fragile. I thought about it. I thought how wonderful to see a quilt to get these blocks actually in a quilt so that they could be um, honored and used that way. But I think I'm going to have to honor these blocks by duplicating them and making this quilt in a tribute to the blocks that I've got. I am probably at this point more likely to, I don't know, frame them or, or do something else with those blocks. So you guys, that's 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 the quilt. I wanted you to see it. I hope that you like it. Um, also, can I just let you know a couple things that I want you to be aware of. Um, that uh, Lizzie Albright and the Attic Window is now available on audiobook. I actually was able to listen to a good portion of that driving home from Nebraska yesterday. Um, of course, I was involved in it the whole way, but I just wanted to hear it again. And Kat Bowser is reading it's wonderful. You can get this on Audible. So either go to Amazon and, and do an audiobook search or just go to Audible. And you know, that's an app that you can have on your phone now. So you can have books right at your fingertips. And I do a lot of audiobooks whenever I'm working around the house or when I'm quilting and those kinds of things, because I can, especially when I'm driving, because I can't read and drive, but I can listen. And then I have a new class coming up in September called Finesse, Finish, and Photo. Um, this is about finishing quilts, putting the right borders on it, choosing the right batting, doing it so that it doesn't look like cooked bacon, but your final exam is going to be about photoing your quilt, showing off your quilt to its best advantage. And I am working with every individual. When you submit a photo, I will give you a personal critique. So this is an interactive class. I will spend a lot of time on this class. I hope that you will join me, and that will be at Let's quilttogether.com and I'm trying to look to see if I can find that. Yeah, I can put that right there for you so that you can see let's quilttogether.com is where you would go to sign up for that class. I have about 25 spots left, you guys, because it's filling up fast. So if you're interested, uh, go and sign up for that class. I can't have a huge group or I would not be able to give you the personal interaction that I want. So I hope that you'll join me for that. And even more importantly, if you have not signed up for Quilt Luminarium ever in your life, this is a course that you can go read all about it. Go to letsquilttogether.com, read all about it. It is 11 and a half hours. It's three days long. It is a course that it includes a syllabus and just about every main thing I know, the meat and potatoes of Ricky Timms and a lot of inspiration in this virtual Let's Quilt Together uh, website uh, doing the virtual quilt luminarium. So I would love for you to do that. And last but not least, I don't want to uh, forget the fact that we can, uh, you can get my new music at um, on iTunes. I'll put the iTunes logo up there and let me get rid of the let's quilt together.com. This is my new album and I would love for you to enjoy Doy that while you're listening to your music. I'm just going to give a little bit of a look over the questions here because I want to finish up today with that alone with my thoughts, iTunes logo. Um, can feathers just be quilted pattern? Um, Nancy, you certainly can. You can do anything. That's my. That's the way I roll. You can do anything. Um, might be less work for those who really don't want to be doing as much applique. Of course you could quilt it that way. Um that's the beautiful thing about any pattern. You do not have to make it the way I say. You just simply don't. And uh, I like seeing all of it come together that way. So that's the way I'm designing it because I know the impact that it will give. But you can have a beautiful quilt uh, any way that you like. And I'm going to be, and I'm sure I'll have some, some classes for that. So it looks like it's a hit, you guys. I'm reading your comments. Um, I'm sure you wanted to do some, <laughs> Heidi, I love applique. Uh, I absolutely do. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I can find this for you, but if I can, I will show you why I love that applique. So give me a second here. Uh, yep. I will be able to put this in here for you. 
Um, let me find the picture. Well, I'm just going to have to do this one. I'll show you why I love this applique because this is a quilt called Dad's Lone Star. And uh, you can see in this quilt, this is a pattern that I have, but you can see how the applique sings. And if that was just quilted, it wouldn't have the same impact. That doesn't mean I don't want you to not, you know, do what you want to do. I just know that when I'm going to make the quilt, I am going to go the extra mile and I am going to push it all the way to, uh, I'm hoping I can hit a home run instead of a base hit. So um, you guys will be able to do whatever you want. So that's my dad's Lone Star. Um, the blocks, I believe they're like 11 and a half inches, Cheryl. They're a very unusual size. They are not too small and they're not too large. They're just typical size quilt blocks. Any other questions that you've got for me today before I say goodbye? I'm going to just start visiting with you guys on Sunday. I'm not trying to do any earth-shattering, life-changing anything. I just want to visit with you, share my life with you, connect with you for a while. Um, we're still dealing with a crazy world and a crazy life right now. I do invite you, please, you know, get on my newsletter because that's another way that I can uh, connect with you. Carol, your applique will be a choice of how you do it. I do machine applique. The one, the Dad's Lone Star quilt here, I'll show it again. That is machine applique that I've done. Um, and uh, so I do, that's the way I do it, but you can do it any way that you want to. So, all right, you guys, it's good to visit with you. Um, my time is up here. I don't want to keep you all day, but it's been good to see you and thanks for visiting with me. And I wish you all the best as we move forward through this week, and I hope to see you next Sunday. I will be taping shows in Dallas next Sunday, so I may not be able to pop on, but if I do, I'll pop on and I'll say hello for just a few minutes. All right, everybody, take care.